In this video, I'm going to show you how to stop your videos in your e-learning course from buffering. I saw a post in the forums today about a user of Adobe Captivate who was struggling to get the videos that they embedded in their e-learning project to play without buffering. And I'm going to share my solution for at least greatly reducing the possibility of buffering. You can't completely eliminate it because, of course, the internet is somewhat unpredictable. But here's my process for optimizing my videos before bringing them into Adobe Captivate. So I've downloaded this sample video from one of the stock video sites. Let's just do a quick preview of it here. If I wanted to use this in my e-learning, shouldn't be a problem at all. One of the things that you might want to check before you actually bring this into Adobe Captivate or whatever e-learning authoring tool that you're using is to check the current condition of the video. Now this happens to be an HD quality video. I can tell by right clicking on the video and going to the details tab. You'll learn a lot about what's uh, actually in this video itself. It's a short video, 17 seconds. You know, maybe you're using this for a title slide or something like that. The frame uh, width and height suggest that this is an HD quality video, which is great. Uh, it's 25 frames per second, which is also fine. But the thing I wanted to really bring your attention to today was the data rate and total bit rate. In this case, those numbers are the same, but essentially we're working with a 10 megabit per second file. And what that means is for this to play back on your organization's network or over the internet, it needs a consistent bandwidth of 10 megabits per second. Anything lower and you might run into buffering issues. So if this was going to be a problem, 10 megabits might work fine on some networks. It might not work well on others. But if your situation requires that 10 megabits per second is too much, we need to lower this. So fortunately, Adobe Captivate comes with Adobe Media Encoder. And you also have Adobe Media Encoder if you have the Creative Cloud suite of products as well. I happen to have the latest version of Media Encoder here. I'm just going to open that up. And I can take this video and drag it right over into the queue. Once I let go, it's going to show up as one of potentially many videos that it's going to re-encode. Now, if you wish to re-encode the video, we're just going to double click on this match source high bitrate item here. This is one of the presets that's available in Media Encoder. When I double click, I'll get this window here and I can go through and make some changes. So again, all the settings are basically matching the source. Under the video tab here, I can make some changes. I could uncheck, let's say resolution and come up with some new numbers, but I don't think I need to do that in this case here. Instead, the thing I want everyone to focus on is the actual bitrate settings. Now there's a couple of choices here that you need to make. The first is this bitrate encoding dropdown selector, and you can choose either a constant bitrate or stick with a variable bitrate, which might be beneficial if you have a lot of motion, such as this video has, and you might want to uh, increase or decrease that bit rate depending on how much is happening on the screen. And you can also go with a two-pass version, which is just a more thorough way of uh, encoding in this case here. So I'm going to go with two-pass, but the main thing I need to do is change this target bit rate. Again, the original file was 10 megabits per second. I need this to run on a network that will only allow for much less. So I can decrease this number. Let's go with three and see how that is. You can experiment with the numbers that work best for your situation. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll now see that my preset is set to custom because I've changed one of those options, or in this case, two of those options. When you're ready to encode, we can, of course, just click the Start Queue button located in the upper right-hand corner. 
you'll see a preview down below and it will work its way through re-encoding this sample movie file. It's renaming it to sample movie underscore one dot mp4 but of course you could edit that and actually come up with a new name that you're happy with here. So let me go ahead and close Adobe Media Encoder and let's look at what we have as a resulting video. So here was our original. Let me right click and go to properties. We'll just move that aside for a second and we'll do the same thing for the resulting video and we'll just do a little comparison here. If I go to details here and details here, you'll see they're still both HD quality videos. Uh, in this case here, the bit rate has gone from 10 megabits per second down to three megabits per second. And actually, if we go back to the general tab, you can see that we've gone from a 20 megabyte file down to 6.81. So here's the original video. I've cut it into my edited video for YouTube. And what I'll do is I'll cut in the resulting video right here. And of course, YouTube will probably do a little bit of compression, but this should give you a general sense of what the quality of the resulting video will look like. You have to ask yourself, does a slightly lower quality HD video work better than a video that doesn't even load at all or takes a long time to load. What is the end user experience like under each circumstance? So in summary, I now have a video file that's less than half the original size, but more importantly, you have a data rate that's much lower and will likely reduce the possibility of buffering in your e-learning course. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.